India's basic malady is rural poverty, which can be eradicated by harnessing science and technology for evolving appropriate solutions to problems of development at local levels. Mr. K. Vishwanathan has been engaged precisely at this task in his native village, Velanar, and its surroundings for the past 35 years. After graduating from Shantini Ketan and studying basic education at Sevagam, Sri Vishwanathan founded Mithrina Ketan in 1956 for pursuing his ideal of rural regeneration by catalyzing all-round development of Velanar and adjoining areas. The land at that time was barren and regarded as incapable of sustaining any vegetation. After seeking advice of geohydrologists and soil cons conservation experts, Mr. Vishwanathan launched concerted measures for soil enrichment and water conservation, planted a great variety of trees, and by improving the fertility of the land, succeeded in covering it with a lush growth of green vegetation. Sri Vishwanathan followed this up by propagating social forestry and agro-based ancillary occupations through the instrument of Krishi Vigyan Kendra. By popularizing mushroom cultivation, dairy development through the development uh, through upgrading of local cattle as well as of poultry and goats, he was able to increase the purchasing power of local people. Further, to implement the program of education linked with practical work, the Rural Technology Center was established, which imparted vocational training in numerous trades and professions for self-employment as well as for organizing cooperatives. As a further step, Mitra Ketan launched programs for raising the quality of rural life. It concentrated its efforts on improving basic amenities by developing technologies for low-cost housing, low-cost sanitation, the supply of drinking water, and above all, health care. Innovative technologies for weaving circular mats of coil, for lengthening the life of coconut cactus, and develop other simple methods for improving the quality of life of the villagers. In selecting Mr. Vishwanathan for this award, the trustees of the foundation feel happy to recognize his dedicated efforts in taking science and technology to the doorstep of villagers for solving the age old rural problem of low productivity and unemployment. It is a mystery to me how one, why a simple villager, village worker like myself, has been chosen to receive this prestigious award in such an August response. When I seek my own answer, I have been devoting myself. For the last three and a half decades, together with my colleagues, co-workers, including my own wife, to devise ways and means to improve existing practices and also introduce technology and science in an appropriate manner by seeking my native village, known as Kalanar in the districts of Trivandrum, which is in Kerala as its base. The total development has been our major thrust in all our activities, which gradually spread out and extended to the other areas. It's a common knowledge that there is science in every step, and technology in all that we do, as much as arts and science. Technology and science are part of our life. That's what we believe. The role of a voluntary body is to create consciousness in a deliberate manner among people in all, of all walks of life, especially among those who need most attention, that is the bottom level in the society. We need a, a scientific temper in all the efforts. <coughs> I'm acting only as a, I'm citing only a few instances since it is already mentioned. We have chosen a place, it is very often called in those days as God's forsaken village. We thought since we are part and parcel of that God's forsaken village, why not we start our efforts there? That's how a group of 
Then people along with me have made that attempt. And uh, I should say, we have not done anything, we are not scientists, we are not technophiles, but we made use of the science and technology available with the government on a voluntary basis. We often call it volunteerism in government service. Volunteerism not only among the volunteers, the public, we can also expect volunteers. So it is with the help of, say for instance, uh, soil conservation department, Groundwater Board, Geological Survey of India, Forestry Department, and various other departments. It's all there in the country. Why I say this? Voluntary bodies alone cannot. They must take initiative, leadership. They should formulate programs along with the people so that it will become people's program rather than waiting for the government to do all this and formulate. And then this government program working with the, I mean, expecting the cooperation of the people. The other way, we should expect, we should seek the support, the cooperation of the government and it should be people's support. Economic development with eco-development and uh, with the political development also because people should learn to live in a democracy. People should learn to participate in all the functions, in all the programs. That participatory approach, that is what is needed when we are instilling this. I think we should consider our, this is my appeal to our private agencies, this is my appeal to our voluntary bodies, all philanthropy minded people and also the industrial and business community of the world. They have a lot of experience of their own which can be shared with the people in the rural areas to make the rural life more livable. And I, with this, and I, I express my deep appreciation from the very bottom of my heart for this honor bestowed on to me. It is an honor to all the voluntary bodies who are striving in the countryside to come up. Let us all join our hands together to lift the country so that it will be a unified and uh, a democratic and, uh, and uh, a responsible uh, country which can show a good example for unity and unity and uh, uh, harmony in this world. Thank you.